all right people don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification that way you'll know when i upload the next video and you'll be supporting my channel follow me on twitter every time i upload a new video i'll be tweeting Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UX, and this is if you never saw it before, you wouldn't believe it was real by the channel Casual Geography. Last post of 2021, Happy New Year! Yeah, this was uploaded literally last day, uh, 31st December, I guess. So yeah, for more consistent content, make sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram below. Okay, so let's watch the one. This is uh, Casual Geography. Uh, obviously, all the videos he makes are fucking awesome. So yeah, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the Casual Geography and Yeah, let's do it. Nah, cause y'all seem to think I know everything like I'm a walking encyclopedia, but if I'm being honest here, I know what the f that was supposed to be like. I had to go in the comments for this. And apparently that's not a deformity. That's actually what they're supposed to look like. It's a Damascus goat. It originated in Middle East countries and is primarily used for meat and milk. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say God makes mistakes, but that skull makes me think his draft and post buttons are way too close to each other. Also, a Damascus named God won a prize for most beautiful goat in a contest in 2008. Proving that some of y'all will lie unprovoked for no f***ing reason. Y'all can call him beautiful, but tell me this goat thing crawls straight out the Goonies. They actually look somewhat normal as babies, but then I guess puberty hits them like Hiroshima. It's honestly the pug of goats, and I truly mean that. And I read some comments on the internet saying, oh, he just wants love. I rebuked that. He wants my life essence. We played God with goats, now we got Barnyard and Dark Souls, and I do not like it. And I could have sworn Satan took the form of a goat. Actually, this makes a lot of sense now. You know y'all don't gotta tag me in every animal video, because like, like, what do you expect me to say? Like, his existence looks like pain. And for y'all that are gonna sit there and tell me that he actually looks cute, I pay way too much for context for y'all to lie about what's in front of my face. Crazy thing is, this is the second most disturbing goat video I've ever seen. Hello? Absolutely not. And known ah! creature gives him- <laughs> I was expecting this thing to say, I'll see into your soul. <laughs> look at how he's- look at how he's seeing. Oh. Absolutely not. And known ah! creature gives a New Yorker a heart attack. I both can and cannot fully explain what that is. It's called a Kalugo, but it's also known as a flying lemur, even though there's somehow two lies in that one name. They don't fly, they glide, and since they spend most of their lives in their trees, they basically just airdrop themselves from branch to branch. And it's not a lemur. Lemurs are primates, making them related to gorillas, chimps, and us. But this thing isn't a primate. Whoever named it would probably name an atheist faith. They use that stretchy membrane called a patagium to glide like flying squirrels, and they can travel 650 feet without stopping. That's 200 meters, or a little bit less than two football fields. But it's not a flying squirrel. And there was a time people thought they were just God's rough draft of a bat, but Kalugos aren't related to bats either. And if you look at the order they're in, Dermoterra, they're the only living members. It's like pulling up to a family reunion and finding out you're the only one left. And because their entire personality involves flying, they're too slow and awkward to survive on the ground, and for an animal that lives in the trees, they're pretty mid-climbers. They're so bad at life that being nocturnal is probably the only thing keeping them alive. Mother Kalugos will- Oh, that's just fucked up. They're bad climbers. So once they glide and falls to the ground, it's really hard to basically go up there, right? Again, and if a predator's around, that's it. That's the end of that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not surprised people confuse them with bats because that's how they look when they are, you know, drop like that with the, you know, wings, you know, spread wide like that. Because bats do that, right? So you think that's like a fruit bat or something? Will carry their babies everywhere for the first six months. Which made some people believe it was a marsupial, like some type of deformed air koala. But it's none of those things. So what the f*** is it? Well, scientists perform genetic analyses on them. Basically a 23andMe for a flying carpet. And it turns out their closest evolutionary relative are primates. It's pretty much the closest you can get to primates without actually being one. Which means this dehydrated Dollar Tree chipmunk is more related to you than it is to an actual squirrel or bat. The more you know. Anyone know what this Here's is? why you should never touch this. That is Glaucus atlanticus, it's a type of nudibranch, but it's also known as a sea slug. It's also a gastropod mollusk. I'm not finna bore you with a whole biology lesson, but gastropod means it's related to snails, and a mollusk means it pulls up to the same cookout as octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. Also, touching one like this is a creative way of saying you want to pay more for health insurance. <laughs> these slugs will eat venomous siphonophores like the Portuguese man of war and steal its venom to use to handle its own light work. It stores the venom in its tissue, so if a predator or a person gets too close, they'll get 50 shades of f around and find out. Do I cuss too much? Like, I know kids watch me, but then again, they watch Family Guy before 4th grade, so I don't even know anymore. And just like the Portuguese- 
Yeah, I think, you know, South Park is worse than Family Guy for kids. Not because of jokes. Because when you see Family Guy, it's in the first five minutes you realize this is not appropriate for kids. Parents would realize it immediately. <clears throat> South Park, you can't realize it in the first five minutes that this is not good for kids. Right? You have to actually go through the stories before some scene comes. That's like, oh, wait a minute, this is inappropriate. As far as this thing, I have this, uh, you know, thumb rule now after watching all these videos that if anything is bright colors like, you know, aqua color or bright blue like that or something like green, green toads and things like that, just stay away from that shit. Anything that is bright colored, it's not trying to hide. And if it's not trying to hide something, it has like poison or some neurotoxin or something. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's not the case every time, but lots of time that's the case. The Cyril Scuffle, the Glaucus can still hand out painful life lessons even after its soul's already ascended. Basically, they don't need to be alive to put you in the hospital. So if you see one on the beach, it's definitely a look, but don't touch. Because if anything's that small and that colorful, there's probably a good reason they don't need to hide. Exhibit A. This blue vibe check can be found off the coast of South Africa in European waters off the east coast of Australia because Australia and some have even been found in the Gulf of California. There are also hermaphrodites that mate by sword fighting and stabbing each other. Normally in nature, the winner gets the female, but here the loser becomes one. The more you know. Here's a story of how 76 beavers were parachuted into Idaho, and yes, that is a thing that happened. So in the 1940s, the people of Idaho had beef with the bucktooth beaver population, mainly because their habit of taking down trees was causing floods in people's yards and damage to gardens. But because beavers actually contribute to society, unlike some of the people complaining about them, the government decided that instead of squad wiping them, it would just be better to move them to another area code. The only problem was the moving process for beavers involved putting them in boxes and Ubering them via horses and mules. This was the 40s, there was no beaver U-Haul. These boxes would overheat and the beavers would become so stressed that they would refuse to eat and the horses and mules carrying them eventually got pressed too. It was a bad time for everyone involved. So they realized they had to get creative. And apparently creative meant tying the boxes to parachutes from World War II and literally airdropping them into the <laughs> Idaho wilderness. Okay. <laughs> In boxes they got so heated up that they got annoyed and didn't eat. So I guess the best thing to do, the answer to that is basically, you know, drop them from the skies on parachute, which they don't understand that there is this thing as parachute. So all they know is just humans just drop them to die. They see sky below and that's it, they have an anxiety attack now. Wilderness. But of course, you can't just eat a beaver out of a plane without being sure you weren't just committing beaver slaughter with extra steps. So they experimented the best and safest ways to drop beavers from a plane, and the test subject they used was an old bin around the block beaver named Geronimo. You really can't make this up. After using old man Geronimo to figure out the perfect height and area to drop the beavers, it was time. August 14th, 1940. Get in there. No, 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 get in there. <laughs> That's just uncomfortable clip, man. It was D-Day, as 76 beavers were loaded into crates and flown in a twin engine where they skydived to their new home. And these furry paratroopers had a 99% success rate. But only because one of the beavers managed to escape and jump out of the box when he was 76 feet from the ground and took himself off the census when he met the ground. Other than that, the rest of the Air Force beavers managed to land safely on the ground and were able to crawl out the box and explore the new neighborhood and begin a new beaver life. And to most people, this was a success. PETA wasn't happy about it, but you know, PETA gone PETA. Also, it turns out each parachuting beaver cost taxpayers about seven bucks a beaver, so I'd say it worked out pretty well. Today, we have better ways to control the beaver population, but something about 76 beavers being airmailed and parachuted like some DLC just brings me joy. One of my favorite all-time animal facts... Was That's that not the only fact. The whole summary is this, basically. 76 beaver annoyed certain people, so they literally took them, you know, parachuted the dam to some other area. They literally got rid of them like, fuck you, and just throw it off the sky. <laughs> That's some next level shit, man. <laughs> the site would have been ridiculous. Nobody has the video of that. Oh, look at that. The beavers are coming down. <laughs> CIA once tried to weaponize otters for some reason, because the 60s were a weirder drug year time, I guess. But they were low-key onto something. Because otters are smart enough to use tools. Tough enough to survive the freezing ocean without blubber. They'll square up and run fades with jaguars and caiman. I've seen them do it. And even though they look like plush toys, they have the power to seriously f*** you up if you give them a reason. They're like honey badgers with better swim time. So someone in the CIA created a report called the Otter Dossier, and I'm going to read you my favorite parts. According to the Otter Dossier, they can be trained to climb ladders and stairs, can carry objects <laughs> underwater, dossier. open zippers, throw objects with their mouth, and turn on faucets. They somehow figured out that a motivated water weasel can chew through a zinc sheet, and I honestly couldn't tell you how they found that one out. There's a lot of other stuff in there too, like how to properly take care of otter pups, because apparently they get diarrhea. A lot. But by far my favorite part is where they say otters are easy to train, but they can become too devoted to humans, which can lead to their destruction. Yeah, honestly, same. The report also mentions that they're almost impossible to transport because an otter that feels confined can and will attempt to destroy anything trying to escape. The report also specifically says never to take food from an otter because, and I might be paraphrasing here, take their food and they take your fingers. Matter of fact, the exact quote was never take food from an otter, particularly that which he has just caught or suffered severe mauling. 
Yeah, someone got really f***ed up for them to put that there. Seriously. Honestly, if you have the chance, please read the whole report. I'm gonna put it in the comments. I mean, there's a chance... <laughs> the sentence ended with Mark knows. So yeah, be careful. <laughs> the report's fake and none of this ever happened, but it's so detailed. Like, too much effort went into it for it to be a lie. Moral of this video, otters are smart, nasty, and they give less f than a prom night virgin. Basically, weapons of otter destruction. Turkey's performing demon ritual on past tense cat. Slow walking does not help. So there's actually a really interesting and complex reason why turkeys do this. Turkeys are so f***ing stupid that it's actually medically fascinating. Like they're not dumb enough to stare at the sky during a storm and reverse baptize themselves, that's actually a well known myth. But they are brain cell deficient enough to not tell the difference between a threat to their way of life and an expired cat. It's likely the turkeys are curious about the past tense cat, but too paranoid to get too close to the course because again turkeys have no idea it's dead and no way of knowing if it's dangerous. What you're seeing is a prey response that only an animal locked in the basement of the food chain can come up with. As for the circling, birds like turkeys, chickens, and pheasants will instinctively follow the tail of the bird in front of them. It's a behavior that helps keep them together as a flock since holding hands isn't really an option. So pretty much these turkeys are stuck in a never-ending cycle of follow the leader, but none of them actually identify as one so they just keep going. And fun fact, this bird was almost the mascot of America. Since a guy named Ben Franklin thought bald eagles were cowardly scavengers that didn't deserve the clout. But if you YouTube with a bald eagle really sound- I don't know which was an army ants or what ants are there, you know. Uh, they said that they follow one leader, but if the leader goes away something or not, they just start to, you know, run in rounds or something. Sounds like he might have been on timing. So yeah, turkeys are, uh... I'm not gonna say they're stupid, but I'm not gonna say they're aware of the world either. Someone asked me what I think the most underrated animal in the world is, and I instantly thought of this picture. Goats really do be goating. The bottom of their hooves have soft pads that contour to the surface they're climbing. Which allows them to be a middle finger to the laws of physics. Oh come this on, that can't be right. This this is not real. I get it, they would climb, but this is some hiking bullshit. No way they can do that. This is look at that. Look at the drop. Soft pads that contour to the surface they're climbing. Which allows them to be a middle finger to the laws of physics. This isn't photoshopped. These are the tree climbing goats of Morocco. They figured out that the fruits of the argan tree are an easy source of food, and when nature says what? climb, goats say how high. This is an alpine ibex. They'll scale up the San Gino Dam in Italy just to lick the salt off the stones and let the rest of the world wonder how. You're For kidding me. Goats are just some hippie free climbing sheep. They eat their Wheaties. Some male mountain goats can tip the scales at over 300 pounds. A mountain goat once caught a fade with a grizzly and it was the bear that got turned into a trophy. You got smoke for you too if you want it. Hikers have been warned when going through the Olympic National Trail in Washington because the mountain goats there have started harassing people. The reason is because the mountain Yeah, goats if they can fuck up a grizzly bear. Yeah, they can fuck easily fuck up a human. There have gotten addicted to the salt and human sweat and pee, and they'll press you just to get their fix. Peeing on a trail in their area code is like a Batman signal to a fiending goat. One actually took a man off the census and wouldn't even let first responders get near his body. Those goats became such a menace that they had to be airdropped somewhere else. The media won't admit Come it, on. but out of all the bears, cougars, and wolves, goats are the real G's, but like lasagna, they move in silence. You only have three seconds. If you can't find it, you're already dead. There you go, on top of here. Alright, time's up. Here's why you always look up if you're under a tree in Tanzania. That is a leopard. Leopards are the best climbers of any big cat, and they'll stalk their victims from- Look, if I found it, no way it's better camouflage there. ...branches, only to drop down and put them in gods recently deleted. And they'll wait up in the trees for hours for the right opportunity to strike. And if you try to escape by climbing up the tree, that'd be like stealing Michael Phelps' wall and then swan diving into a pool. That's you their kidding, home look at that. That's only one reason you should be careful under trees. I, I don't know what to say to this clip. It just jumped from here. What if it didn't land on a branch? The, 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 that, you know, the, it's not small, right? You could have easily slipped. It's not like some, you know, squirrel or something. It's a big size one. What if it had not landed on a, you know, branch or something? It would have fell down. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, jump. Pool. That's their home court. But that's only one reason you should be careful under trees. Because leopards carry their meals up in trees where they don't have to pay food taxes to lions or hyenas. And leopards are so freakishly strong that they can deadlift that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Look at the back strength. They're literally pull up an uh, entire dead animal up the tree. Animals heavier than they are up into the trees using only their mouth. Yes, that is a giraffe. But because leopards keep anything they can't finish up in the trees, you can really become a hashtag if a leopard's lunch gets airdropped to the back of your head. Which means at least once in the history of mankind, a child became an orphan because a half-eaten rhino fell from a tree and put his father in a Twitter bio. And when I say leopards will fly out of a tree to catch a body, I mean they don't have fall damage, or at least they don't think they do. Leopards have a hit list of over 90 different species of animal, and they're so good at stat padding that they'll sometimes accidentally friendly fire. Ooh, this is fucked up. Yeah, so fun fact. 
This animal sends more people to the ER than bears, wolves, and cougars bison. combined. The American bison is the heaviest thing with a heartbeat in North America, maxing out at over 2,200 pounds. They can also grow to 10 feet long, run you down at 35. Yeah, it looks like it, 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 its diet consists of a massive amount of steroids, diet ball or something. Look at that shit. If you try to run from the smoke by hopping over a fence, a motivated bison can clear a six foot fence. Now there's two reasons why this guy six is foot. seriously testing his life insurance. One is because they're pretty much legally blind, so like rhinos, they respond to anything that moves with violence. And two is because a bison is a great value meal for predators. Wolves and grizzlies have been known to smoke an appa pack, and mountain lions will target unaccompanied baby bison. That generational trauma means a bison is more likely to turn a person into a chalk outline if they get out of line. The difference between a bear and an animal like a moose or bison is a bear looks at you and has to decide if you're even worth the effort. A bison assumes you're going to turn him into calories and a barrel roll you first. But because bison in national parks are used to being around people, they're usually pretty chill unless you get too close. The only problem is, getting too close is how pictures like this happen. Someone had to go home. So seriously, how much we domesticated them at the point? Domesticated or something like that. You know, at the point that they let go of the natural instinct like, oh, that's just humans. We know that, right? By now we know that. That's humans are going to be fine. With no pants. And explain that she lost them because she couldn't social distance from a tank with horns. Yeah, don't do that. Because bison isn't just a name. It's what your parents are going to say at your casket if Appa decides to turn up on you. <laughs> Horrifying sound of a woman becoming a hashtag. Not a woman. The biggest mistake you could make is going to save that woman. Because that's not a woman getting turned into a headline. That was a female mountain lion in heat. Female cougars will often make these shrieking, blood-curdling screams when they're in estrus. It's like their Batman signal for getting laid. Answering that call when it's not for you is how you meet Batman's parents. Of course I'm exaggerating, cougars are way more afraid of you and will probably go the other way if you pull up on them. What yeah. won't go away are the bricks in your pants after you try to be a hero and make eye contact with this walking steroid. And I know it's not related, but I'm still gonna mention it. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to fool them into a false sense of security before they turn them into a hashtag. In fact, not on Yeah, many cats will basically run away if they see a human. I don't think tiger is one of them, right? So yeah, mountain lions would run away, but if you see a tiger and you see directly at a tiger, it's like, what you looking at? <laughs> I'm thinking about it, oh, this is a margay, and they do the exact same thing with baby monkeys. Now, I'm not saying the cougars do it on purpose, but I am saying that nature is a bitch like that. Yeah. Also, I forgot to mention that cougars tend to scream while mating. So if you're ever alone in bed and hear a woman on a Tinder date with Joe from you, don't worry. It's just cougars getting more action than you. You know penguins will sell themselves, but like, in that way? Let me explain. This is an Adeli penguin. If you hear a messed up penguin fact, it usually involves them. So basically, Adelis build their nests out of piles of pebbles, which means two things. Pebbles are a penguin's form of currency, and the penguin with the most pebbles is considered the most attractive. So female Adeli penguins will offer their bodies to males in exchange for a rock, and yeah, it's exactly what I'm making it sound like. Sometimes the female will give it up to a male in exchange for a pebble, even though she already has a mate waiting for her back at the nest. Scientists can't really confirm this, but it's believed the females do this so that if their mate gets packed up by a seal or something, they still have a backup. It doesn't stop there, because a lot of times the female will pretend to be interested in the single male, and right when the male thinks he's about to get it in, she takes the pebble and runs back to her actual mate. The best example I could think of is if you buy a girl a drink only for her to take it and bring it over to her man on the other side of the bar. Basically, these penguins pull a Cardi B, but, you know, without the Cosby part. And before you feel bad for them, just remember that male Adelis have been known to have relations with injured females, chicks, penguin corpses, and one even hooked up with the ground. To completion. Penguins are dressed as Wall Street brokers and they have the moral compass of one too. <laughs> Friendly reminder that reindeer will eat this special magic mushroom that'll get them so high that they'll wander around aimlessly and make a bunch of weird drunken noises. And the mushroom's toxic to us, but if you drink the pee of a reindeer that's eaten it, you too can get elevated and hella faded. Basically, getting R. Kelly by a reindeer will have you believing you can fly as well. The yeah, <laughs> reindeers of mushrooms. That's just, yeah, this is why this channel is great. You hear things that you think would never hear. Yeah, you know, crying, you know, mountain lions, basically. <laughs> basically, you know, animals are fucking mushrooms. Oh, that's just fucked up. Penguin thing, I guess he mentioned that in one of the older videos. But yeah, that's also a whole, you know, social structure is fucked up. But yeah. Alright, well, that was. If you never saw it before, you wouldn't believe it was real by the Chunk Castle Geographic. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction, and there's a link in the description. Check out the cards, check out the cards, and yeah.
I guess I'll see you next time. Comment down if you want to react to any specific video or any channel. And yeah. All right.